Hey guys, this is Courtney back from Willow's Bloom, and I'm super excited today to talk about the April forecast for Capricorn Sun and Rising. Before we do, I did want to mention that we had a really big month in March. We had Saturn move into the sign of Pisces, where it will remain for the next two and a half years. We had Pluto move into the sign of Aquarius, and Pluto has been in the sign of Capricorn since 2008, so it's a really big deal to have Pluto move a sign. Uh, as a collective and as individuals and i also we had the start of uh, the astrological new year with the aries new moon and so i made videos about all of these things and i will link them down below so that you don't forget to watch them because they will have an impact on the entire year or years to come so the reason why i'm doing this monthly forecast is because i did a youtube post uh, a, a poll um, and I got a pretty much 50-50 split between doing a weekly and a monthly forecast. But I did want to try this because I've been getting comments and I wanted to experiment and see which one you guys like better now that I've done both. So let me know down below what you prefer because I don't know. I, I feel like I wouldn't really know what I want if I were on the other side of this. I think I would have that kind of 50-50 split too. But I think overviews of the month give you this kind of bird's eye view to make plans and decisions and kind of know what's coming up for you, what the themes are for you. And then the weekly is more so, you know, if something comes up during the week or looking at the week ahead, it's more an immediate. You guys already get that. So let me know down below what you prefer. Um, I think I kind of like these. So we're starting off Capricorn on April 3rd with Mercury moving into the sign of Taurus, which is your fifth house. And on this day, it's also making a square to Pluto in your second house. So wherever Mercury goes, it tends to bring our attention with it. Um, we tend to either focus on it or become a little bit busier in that area of our lives. So if you guys have children, for example, the Mercury moving into the fifth house will make your life with your children just a lot more occupied. Uh, maybe you'll be running around with them, taking them to the park, doing different things with them that you're normally not doing in the winter months, um, now that we've entered spring. Uh, we also can see there just being a greater focus on things that bring you more joy. So if you felt like you've been in work mode or you've been really focusing on your house because Mercury was in your fourth house, or your home or your family, maybe you'll start to focus more on, oh, I want to go out and have a drink or I want to I make this painting or I want to work on my passion projects or my business or go put myself out there again and start dating or have um, special like adventures with my partner. Uh, I pulled the nine of cups. So it's, it's, this is a wish fulfillment card. This is really focusing on, again, joy, personal expression. What do I need to do to feel like I am fulfilling myself? Essentially, I am filling up my cup. I am feeling just emotionally satisfied with my life and not just like I'm working hard and checking off my duties, but I'm truly enjoying things. And on this day, I mentioned that Mercury is squaring Pluto in the second. So um, Mercury squaring Pluto can sometimes bring stuff up to the surface where we have been ignoring maybe some of our other needs or some of our thoughts about something or feelings about something. And Mercury square Pluto wants us to see the truth. It wants us to address things. It wants us to be forward. And because Pluto's in the second, it might bring some stuff up around money or survival or worthiness that is leading to you not feeling emotionally fulfilled or not doing the things that would make you happy. So for example, if you feel like I never have enough money and so you're like never stop working and you never take a break, that's that energy that's draining you. Or if you feel like you're not ever doing good enough or you're not worthy, then you might notice that life just feels harder and is less enjoyable because you're constantly needing to work and prove yourself um, to do, to do, to prove that you are an amazing human being when in life it's just about being and enjoying um, just as much as it is about doing. So I think many of you guys are going to have kind of some truths about that. Um, you might also realize how you've been spending your money and reevaluating it to bring it more in alignment and ask yourself, like, is this truly what I enjoy? Is this, um, is this something that's really adding value to my life? Like, or am I spending impulsively? Am I spending to 
prove a point or am I spending to avoid myself? There can be a lot of representations of money in terms of how we feel about ourselves, and we can start to understand that a little bit more. We have the hanged one and the higher font. The higher font is a card about doing things traditionally, but the hanged man is about kind of turning things on their head and doing them differently or looking at them from a different perspective. So I feel like this is also saying like, let's make some shifts to the things that you felt like you had to do or that you were doing because of old precedent, of old ways of doing things. Um, or like there's certain traditions or expectations and it's like, I got to do this. I got to study it this way. I have to have a schedule. I've got to do my nine to five. I have to put this many hours in. I feel like you guys are shifting that and turning it on its head, um, to embark on a state of becoming more joyful and abundant, um, and doing things in your own personal way through your own personal expression instead of like, according to tradition or existing expectations and that's what fifth house is about it's a lot about like what makes us unique and special and what do we really enjoy what are our gifts and talents and how do we step further into those so that's kind of a big focus for you this month in general on april 5th we have mercury in taurus in your fifth sex telling saturn in your third so i do feel like if there are ways in which you could commit further to establishing your gifts to maybe even studying more or doing more related to them or things that you enjoy um, even if that's like learning something new or traveling or um, picking up a new hobby or further investing in those hobbies mercury sextile saturn is about taking ideas and implementing them into reality so especially with saturn in the third which is already kind of like a really busy active house where we feel like we've got a lot going on especially like a lot of tasks a lot of to do's a lot of random things like that mercury is saying okay how can we take that and transform it into something more enjoyable and i see that with the eight of wands and the star it's like how can we take this really busy fast-paced energy lots on our to-do list lots coming at us in life how can we transform that into an experience where we feel like we are the star we are expressing ourselves fully we are the ones on the stage like being seen and just in our own uniqueness and our own talents and our own gifts um, and not just like with our head down running around town um, so this might be like a more kind of artistic way of describing it but i feel like there's almost some lightness or some healing coming in around how busy you are and how you go about your tasks um, that's trying to bring out more playfulness more joy more authenticity um, that is going to feel a lot better on this same day april 5th we have sun conjunct chiron in aries and your fourth house so everyone as a collective is going through a healing and a revelation around the masculine because chiron and aries is the wounded masculine and when the sun comes here it's trying to bring clarity it's trying to bring peace or breakthroughs so that we can stop old cycles of toxic masculinity um, or unhealthy masculinity. Um, so unhealthy masculinity can look like being impulsive. This is very Aries energy. So think about it like that. Being impulsive, um, being aggressive, being overly assertive, pushing, trying too hard to achieve something. Um, it could look like doing everything yourself being hyper independent and self-reliant um, there are a lot of different ways that this can manifest but being in your fourth house this is going to directly relate to healing the inner masculine associated with your family your your home dynamics as well as your emotional internal world and how you kind of relate to the world through your emotions and your past so if for example i'm just there are many ways that this could manifest so just kind of put that into your life but if for example you have um like you grew up with without a dad or with a, a dad who is really kind of absent or toxic masculinity you might feel like you have to really embody that energy yourself um and take care of everything yourself and be super independent and I'm not going to rely on a man or I'm not going to rely on anybody else but myself. And it could become um, overly independent, emotionally, 
uh, especially in the fourth house or even when it comes to like just needing comfort, needing support in any area of your life. You're like, no, I'm going to do this on my own. When the sun conjuncts Chiron, it might make you realize how you've been just pushing so hard in life um, to get something when there might be a more of a need to relax and receive more of the feminine energy. Um, and so I think when Mercury moves into Taurus, which is ruled by Venus, the planet that's opposite Mars, the feminine planet, it's going to help kind of balance that out. It's like, how can I actually step more into joy, playfulness, and more of that feminine energy instead of that I'll do it all myself, the hyper-independence, self-reliance um, that you might be experiencing. So what does a sun conjunct Chiron in the fourth do for Capricorn risings in the sun? All right, we have the Knight of Pentacles. So I do think that this is something related to, there's a lot coming up in these groups recently around like work, um, also relationships, but a lot around like our work. The Knight of Pentacles is very much us showing up day after day, dedicated to getting something done, chipping away at it, working really, really hard. And so I feel like the sun conjunct Chiron and Aries is showing you, it's almost like doing an, an overview of your effort and asking like where, yes, you want to be consistent. Um, but here, let me pull another card. We have the King of Swords. Hmm. It's interesting because these are pretty masculine cards coming out. So I almost feel like there's something healing around your consistency, your work, your routine, your boundaries, your honesty, your leadership, your communication. Like those areas of your life, I feel like need some type of support or some type of adjustment um, or healing or clarity. It's like, what am I working towards? I think you might realize a little bit more emotionally, like, why am I doing this? What are my reasons for this? What am I, what are my goals? If you've been driven by anything that's been unhealthy or imbalanced, I really feel like you're going to become a lot clearer around that and clear up those motivations to become healthier, if that makes sense. Um, the next day, we have a full moon in Libra in your 10th house. So I think that this will positively impact your career. You understanding why you're doing anything in life um, is going to make your mission stronger and more purposeful. And that will help your career. So I do think that there's going to be some exciting shifts that could happen around this time. Full moons are often sources of manifestation or culminations. So we can start to see the results of something that we want. But I'll do a whole separate video about that in particular. On April 11th, we have a really good transit that everyone I think is going to enjoy, which is the sun conjunct Jupiter in Aries in your fourth house. So this is obviously sun conjunct Jupiter tends to bring a lot of wisdom. It tends to bring opportunities, hopefulness, exuberance, and this is happening in your fourth house. So you might just feel like more emotionally expansive, excited, um, you might feel like your family is getting better. You might have the opportunity to work with people within your home um, to do something new. Interesting. Okay, I got a lot of cards for this. It might feel almost like just a new emotional beginning for you as well, where you're starting to see opportunities and paths that you hadn't recognized before. I pulled the Three of Pentacles, the Fool card, the Ace of Swords, which is very much in line with the Fool. It's like a new idea. The Two of Pentacles, the Page or the Knight of Cups, and the Wheel of Fortune. Okay, there's a lot of cards here. So the Three of Pentacles, the Fool, and the Ace of Swords. There's something here where you have some kind of new opportunity to work with somebody or get some kind of support. Um... The, the three of pentacles is a teamwork card. It doesn't have to indicate that in particular, but I really feel like with the sun conjunct Jupiter, Jupiter can be a quite social planet. Um, it can bring people into our lives. So I feel like you guys are either getting 
some support, like a resource, like something is added to your life. Either a person is added that can help you or a resource is added or a new idea or a new path is added. Um, and I really feel like you're going to start a new thing that you haven't thought of before. Like you're, you're going to act on some kind of idea, like a new idea is going to come to you that opens up an entirely new pathway. It's like, okay, I know this is in your fourth house, but for some reason I'm not really feeling like this has to be your fourth house. Like some idea comes to you that just feels like an alignment with who you are and a person might come to you and say it or a person might offer to help you with it and you're like, oh, I'm going to I'm gonna do that. I'm going to take this new adventure. And with the two of pentacles, I feel like you're not giving up on something that you're already doing, but you're going down a new path um, and adding it to your existing path. You're juggling both of them. And on the same day, Venus moves into Gemini, which is near sixth house, so which is work related. So I do think that you're going to add something on to your existing plate. But I feel like it's going to be something supportive with the three of pentacles. It's not going to be like uh, everything is on my lap. And then we have the nine of cups and the wheel of fortune. So I almost feel like whatever this is, it's a lot more emotionally exciting for you than maybe what you have currently going on. So maybe you're like, oh, I'm going to take this new art class for fun and I meet new people there and it's like really inspiring to me and really creative or it's going to be something else that lights you up in some type of way that is more emotionally fulfilling than just you going about your life and I think that's kind of like the purpose for this month for you is how do I make things more emotionally fulfilling for myself how do I create a balance between existing work and what makes me light up and what makes me me so I feel like that's going to happen in a really emotionally fulfilling way. And then we have the Wheel of Fortune, which is saying then for some reason, as you start to pursue this new exciting path, for some of you, it could even be a relationship with somebody where they really like you meet somebody new and you have an amazing conversation and you like make them as a new friend or if you're polyamorous, like a second partner or something like that, like it could be a people person, it could be a situation, it could be a work opportunity, but it's something that feels really fulfilling and really exciting. And because you pursue that, it starts to shift your wheel of fortune. It starts to shift your fate to make things actually start improving in your life overall. So it's almost like the universe sees that you're making efforts to pursue things that bring you joy and then things start in your whole life start to improve for the better. It's like, okay, that's what we wanted from you all along. You didn't have to work so hard to get what you wanted. Now we're going to make what you want really easy and kind of fall into your lap because you are fulfilling yourself. And that is actually the most abundant, attractive energy that there is. It's not about like working so hard. It's about feeling good about what you're doing and people and the world are attracted to that like I said and I think things become easier because of that energy very exciting for you the next three days later we have April 14th Venus in your sixth is making a square to Saturn in your third so definitely with Venus in your sixth relationships and collaborations are better um, co-workers or receiving support to manage responsibilities that's why the three of pentacles came up but on the 14th, you might notice that there's a little bit of um, issues come up because Venus squaring Saturn is just a harder transit. It is a short transit, but we will feel like, oh, relationships, like communication with people might go a astray during that period of time. Um, you might feel a little bit more anxious or like the needs that were being met are not being met on this day in particular. Finances might feel bad. You might have just like, more social or physical or even mental anxiety like you might just be kind of really caught up in your head worrying about the future or if you're not perfect enough or there could be things that are interpersonal relationship conflicts that create that anxiety i see that with the knight and the eight of swords like they're just unknown factors or shadowy things that are coming up and making you feel stuck that are making you feel like you're in this period of rumination and worry and with the Ace of Cups, I feel like it's trying to to get you to um, 
like question your emotions. Like you might have, let me pull a clarifier for this Ace of Cups. You might have some like new feelings about something that comes up and like starts to get in your head. With the rest of the cards here, we have the Ace of Pentacles. So two aces, like something new is coming up. Some op new opportunity, new feeling, new idea. There's something about this that's like giving you anxiety, I think. And I'm not sure why. So maybe you're like, I don't know if I can do this because you just started on it. Or you start pursuing it and you start to kind of get in your head. Um, so just kind of be aware that this is a little bit of a weird day. But ultimately, I mean, it's not trying to hold you back. It's just this like blip in the road on your path towards what you're desiring. April 20th, we have an Aries solar eclipse, which is a new moon in your fourth house. So a solar eclipse is a really big deal. It tends to bring some big changes in our life. It's like a catalyst that wakes us up and sets us on a new life path that we hadn't necessarily considered before. And your fourth house, this could indicate having some type of move, um, having big changes within your home or big changes within your family, your emotions. The fourth house represents a lot about even our goals and our security and what we want long term for ourselves. Um, and so there could be some new beginnings in those areas of your life, but I'll do a whole separate video about that later this month. On the same day, the sun moves into Taurus in your fifth house. So your focus and attention that was there with Mercury is becoming heightened. So your focus and attention on what brings me joy, what makes me passionate, what makes me feel creative with the Queen of Wands, that's becoming even more enhanced as the sun moves into this house. Um, I also pulled the Nine of Swords for some reason. So I think that you guys are, I don't know, I'm just really getting, because the next day we have Mercury retrograding in your fifth house in the sign Taurus until May 14th. So April 21st and May 14th, we have Mercury retrograde and it's our time to go back to the drawing board to redo things, analyze what was going right and wrong. And as I mentioned, Mercury in this house is really putting an emphasis on your kids, your joy, your pleasures, your sense of pursuing your gifts, your desires, your passions, your creativity. But with the Queen of Swords wands coming out with the Nine of Swords and Mercury retrograding in this house, there's something that I feel like you're not like wherever mercury retrogrades we're not getting it right the first time it's like you're trying to pursue this thing that brings you joy you're stepping into it but for some reason it's giving you anxiety with the nine of swords for some reason you're not i don't know maybe you feel like whenever you do take a break and do something for fun for yourself maybe you get anxiety that you're not being productive or that um you don't have time for this or Maybe you get anxiety that you're not doing it well enough or whatever it is. It's like the thing that's supposed to bring you joy, you're still having trouble just releasing expectations and judgments of yourself around it and around your schedule and around your time and your energy and how you're doing things. And I feel like it's just causing you a little bit of suffering. Yeah, the five of cups and the devil, it's like you're really looking at the glass half empty and you're feeling like you're stuck or like you're bound it's it does feel like this really old energy i'm not gonna lie like this i feel like capricorns have been going this, through this for a while i feel like i've had a similar message for you guys consistently these last few months around like just calming down a little bit with the self-judgment and like overworking and worrying and being perfect and all this stuff and i think that that's this devil card it's like i'm not doing good enough i have to try harder I'm getting stuck in my old habits of, you know, feeling like I have to stick to the certain routine and I'm giving myself a hard time and I feel like things are going wrong with this five of cups. Again, the glass half empty, seeing where things are disappointment, seeing where things are a failure, where I'm not doing good enough. And it's like, let's finally take a chill pill. Like we're trying to step into a state of enjoying life more let's leave that old story behind. I really feel like Mercury retrograde in this case is less about like what you're redoing in terms of actions. And it's a lot more about what you are resetting in terms of your mental chatter. It's like your mind has just, I really feel like your mind is, is trying to become more settled, more simple, more supportive 
more enjoying the moment and like enjoying the pleasures of life, your mind is, is reaching towards that state, but it's kind of regressing when Mercury goes retrograde and needing to clear up the things and the patterns and the beliefs and maybe even some habits that are putting you backwards a little bit and making you feel like, oh, I'm not doing good enough. I can't enjoy myself right now because I haven't finished the dishes. You know, it's like letting that go. I think this Mercury retrograde is going to help you remove a lot of that baggage. Um, and then on the last transit I'm going to talk about is April 25th. We have the sun in Taurus in the fifth house, sex telling Saturn in the third. So I think that this is going to help you become more stable with this king of pentacles. The fifth sex telling the third, it's, it's again, bringing in that element of our mindset and our joy, our fun, our children, our activities that we like to do. It's like bringing stability between these areas of our life. So I'm going to create some kind of support for myself, either mentally or asking for help. Like I see something becoming a lot more stable and solid here. And this is going to help the Mercury retrograde to get out of that more frenetic like anxiety of like I'm not doing good enough. The King of Pentacles, they have set expectations for themselves that are realistic and they delegate and they get support and they check the things off their to-do list and then they go and enjoy themselves and they have this very practical way of being that is like, okay, once I finish this, then I can feel complete. And it's, it is, again, it's very practical. It's earthy. It's like, it's not in the head where it's constantly trying to like find a reason why something isn't working. It's like, okay, I set out to do these things today. I did them. I'm satisfied. It's like very straightforward. It's very linear. And so it's a lot easier to feel complete, to feel stable and secure because you have a plan, you do the plan, you execute, and then you get the result and the rest of your time you can use to enjoy yourself. So I feel like the sun sex telling Saturn is going to help you do that. Um, it might help you create some kind of plan or thought process or strategy that will make you feel like you are solid, safe, and secure and not have as much like the mental chatter. So I'm going to end this reading by pulling a an oracle card for your advice for the month of April. So what is advice for Capricorn for the month of April? Okay, we got the Jade. That's one of my favorites. So pretty. Let's see what Jade says. The answer you are seeking has to do with aligning yourself with your purpose. Any unhappiness you feel comes from being disconnected from what you truly long to be doing with your life. This is, is this not exactly what I was saying? I feel like you guys have been in this should mode of like, I should be doing this. I should work. Da, 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 da. And it's like, you're starting to move into feeling like you're pursuing things that make you really happy. And especially when you have that full moon in Libra in your 10th house, on April 6th, this is going to help you get the benefits of like doing things that bring you joy because it's like you're connecting it to your purpose. Your purpose isn't always about your career. You can fulfill your purpose by simply being you in the right place at the right time. Let Jade constructively channel your passionate energy into inspired action towards fulfilling your divine purpose. Known to aid in breaking down self-imposed limitations, which was that devil car we pulled earlier. I feel like a lot of you guys have these stories around why you can't do things that you enjoy. I almost feel like you, you feel like it's not possible for you. Um, Jade allows you to transcend ego-based thoughts and check out your path from bird's eye view. With a little distance, you can see what your heart truly desires and begin to feel that achieving those dreams is a true possibility. When you are able to overcome lower thinking and baseless fears conjured by ego, you become a vibrational match for your destiny and can bring what you thought you could only dream of into life. What could be better? The action step, I kind of want to tell you the action step. It says do an emotional inventory of your life. When you think about every facet of your existence, what part gets you smiling and lights you up? Discover those areas and resolve to devote more time to them. So Really ask yourself, what makes me feel fulfilled? How can I spend more time doing that? Where are you less passionate and stoked? 
and spend less time there. Seek the overlap of what you love, what you're great at, and what the world needs more of. And maybe you can get paid for it. Okay, wow. I think that card just speaks volumes to exactly the message that I felt coming through for you this month. So I hope that you guys enjoy this. Um, Don't forget that I am starting to offer some coaching that's ongoing. It's a 12-week long program, one-on-one with me. And basically what I'm doing is I'm looking at your astrology chart and relating it to basically development and what happens during development in our childhood. And we're kind of seeing like what hiccups happened. And then from those hiccups, we can see the current patterns that you're experiencing. So if you're constantly feeling like I need to strive, I need to push, there's some kind of pattern that's happening here from your childhood that you're not able to fully let go of. And so that's something that we will work on in our coaching sessions together, really deeply exploring your chart and it's super powerful. So if you're interested in something like that, let me know at contact at willisboom.com. You can check out my website for a one-off session and don't forget to like, comment below, subscribe, share with your friends and have a great day.